Hi Booktube! Welcome back to The Babbling Bee and welcome to the comfort reading tag. This is my first original Booktube tag and it sprang into being just because I was thinking about uh, how much we have all been relying on comfort reading over the last year and into this year, um, and how much I appreciate all of my favorite comforting books and how comfort is kind of the heart of why I read. Uh, so I just wanted to celebrate comfort reading and make a tag for uh, all you mood readers out there, uh, all of you uh, old soul, cozy, loving, comfort reading readers. So. This is a very squishy tag, it's a very interpretive tag, so interpret the questions as you will. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you do this tag, or feel free to just answer the questions in the comments, or just let me know about some of your favorite comfort books. So let's get right into it. The first uh, prompt or question is, The Kettle is On, a book of steadfast comfort, always there for you, makes any day better, like a cup of tea or your favorite warm drink. And that book for me is unquestionably, at least at this point in my life, uh, Martha's Vineyard Isle of Dreams by Susan Branch. And as you can see, uh, this is supposed to be a very pretty book with a very pretty uh, dust jacket. And I don't even know where the dust jacket is at this point because I have just been carrying this book around the house with me um, for at least a year now. Uh, it ends up places all over the house because I just find that so often I need to pick it up and just flick through a few of the pages. And Susan Branch is just the epitome of coziness and comfort to me. And she really uh, intentionally uh, made it a point in her life to seek out comfort and create comfort in her home and her lifestyle. Uh, so her books are full of wonderful, endearing artwork. I mean, it's a very specific kind of art style, I would say, uh, so it might not be for everybody, but it's definitely for me. Uh, this book is about uh, Susan Branch. I don't know if you can see these. This book is about Susan Branch uh, moving across the country uh, to Martha's Vineyard and finding herself a tiny little house uh, to live in and make her own and it's full of cozy recipes and old comfort movie recommendations and pictures of her house and the changing seasons uh, on the island and I just find it immensely comforting. So it is just as steadfast for me as a good cup of tea. The next question is Grandmother's Quilt. I told you this was a squishy tag guys. <laughs> Grandmother's Quilt, a book that reminds you of a loved one or a comforting book that was given to you or read aloud to you by someone dear. So the one I picked for this is this specific edition of Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery because it was given to me by my actual grandmother uh, when I was a kid and she said, you need to read Anne of Green Gables, you're gonna love it, it's a fairy tailor kind of story. And she was, of course, absolutely right. And I treasure this book, I treasure this edition specifically. Um, also, I was telling my mother about this tag, and she insisted that I also mention The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, uh, which she read aloud to us as kids. So I don't have a copy of it to hand at the moment, but thanks, Mom. And uh, there you go. I uh, put it in here for you. So the next question is Warm Spices, a book with particularly vivid prose or imagery, a story comforting in its richness, depth or vibrance. So I often find that when I'm looking for comfort reading, uh, sometimes it's, you know, it's a case where I need something really gentle and soothing and sort of bland, but sometimes I need something with depth and spice to it to kind of wake me back up, um, make me feel alive. And so my two picks for this prompt are The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd, which is one of my favorite books of all time. This is a very warm book. It's very summery. I get a hankering to reread it every summer. Um, this book is about a young girl uh, who has suffered some trauma and tragedy in her life, and she goes on a journey, finds, um, you know, family, she finds sisterhood, and she finds sort of like stand-in mothers to help her heal. Um, it's about bees, it's about honey. Uh, 
yeah, it's just got this wonderful, very warm aesthetic to it that I am always drawn to. And then the next one that I picked for this prompt, not what I would consider a summery read. I think of this as, as more wintry. This is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. But in terms of being vivid uh, and having depth, I think this absolutely does it. Daphne du Maurier is so skilled at drawing incredibly atmospheric settings, and I just love to get lost in it, and I find her writing to be so rich. Um, so yeah, this is a wonderful uh, gothic feast of a book. Okay, next prompt is Candlelight, a book that encourages you or keeps you going when things feel dark. So the first one that I have for this is The Greatest Gift, Unwrapping the Full Love Story of Christmas by Anne Voskamp. I find so much comfort in Anne Voskamp's writing. Um, this is a Christian devotional book that is obviously <laughs> intended for Christmas time, but I can pick it up at any time of the year and draw comfort from it. She does not shy away from talking about the hard things in life and talking about uh, pain and how, you know, as human beings in this world, we're going to suffer and have pain, but she's so good at finding hope and beauty in the midst of life. Um, and yeah, I just, I find so much comfort and sustenance from her books. And then the second one that I have for this is Romancing the Ordinary, A Year of Simple Splendor by Sarah Van Branick, is I think how you say her name. Um, her books are in the vein of self-help, but I would also say they're in the vein of kind of self-inspiration, where you practice looking for uh, magic and beauty and delight in your everyday ordinary life. Um, she's kind of similar to Susan Branch in the way that she really helps me to try and be intentional in not just looking for comfort and coziness and magic, but creating those things um, every day. So yeah, I don't really have to like pick this up and read it all the way through. I can just pick it up and flip to a page. I think this one is organized by the months of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, which I just find any book that is split up into seasons super comforting. So yeah, a very enchanting and inspirational read. And then the next prompt is Laugh Medicine, a book that makes you laugh out loud or grin widely, coming to the rescue on the gloomiest days. So I have two for this one again. This one is Children's Letters to God, uh, compiled by Stuart Hample and Eric Marshall, uh, the corner of which has been chewed on by my cat, but never mind. Uh, these are just so funny and endearing uh, to me, and they are absurd at times uh, in the way that only children can be. Uh, for example, this one says, Dear God, how come you didn't invent any new animals lately? We still have just all the old ones. Uh, let me see if I can find one more. Dear Mr. God, I wish you would not make it so easy for people to come apart. I had three stitches and a shot. So yeah, uh, this book just makes me smile and helps me take things a little bit less seriously, which is good sometimes if you're in a funk and in need of some comfort. Uh, a book that makes me literally laugh out loud is I Feel Bad About My Neck and Other Thoughts on Being a Woman by Nora Ephron. Her writing is absolutely hilarious to me, uh, and I just love to flip through any of her humorous essay collections. Uh, <laughs> she has one in here called I Hate My Purse. She has another one in this collection called On Maintenance, which is uh, a hilarious take on how frustrating it is to have to keep up with and maintain all of, you know, your different things, hair, nails, makeup, etc. Uh, and yeah, she just cracks me up. If you like Nora Ephron's movies, um, Julie and Julia, Sleepless in Seattle, You've Got Mail, uh, I think you would find a lot to like in her humorous writing. Okay, next prompt is in bed all day. You've got your warm drink, your cozy blanket, or grandmother's quilt. Uh, what do you read when you're curled up in bed all day? Or if you can only manage a couple of hours to yourself. So this is sort of a stand-in for anything by Jane Austen. This is Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Uh, I find Jane Austen so comforting to read. Um, 
but particularly if I'm having a sick day, uh, I think just because I'm familiar with all of the plots of her books, uh, and I've watched all of the movie adaptations so many times, so I'm familiar with all of these characters, and I love the sort of cozy domestic satire uh, in her books, and, you know, this is a world where kind of there, there are problems and there is conflict, but it mostly is revolving around like, what are we going to wear to the ball and who's coming for tea and that sort of stuff. So uh, I find these books to be very gentle on the mind, which is what I need on an in bed all day sort of a day. Okay, next we have Endless Comfort, a book that brings you solace no matter how many times you re read it. So the first one that I have for this is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I listened to this on audiobook earlier this year and found it to be immensely comforting and just lovely. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many times I revisit this story, it fills me with hope and a sense of new life and I just love it. Uh, also, this one's a bit odd, but this is The Sense and Sensibility Screenplay Diaries, uh, bringing Jane Austen's novel to film by Emma Thompson. So it is what it says on the box. It contains the screenplay for, I think, the 1995 adaptation uh, that Emma Thompson wrote. Uh, and then it also has her diaries of the process of making the movie and being on set, um, acting in it, interacting with the other actors uh, and the crew. It's full of funny moments and foibles and uh, awkward things and cozy British countryside settings and bed and breakfasts and I just love it and it makes me laugh and uh, yeah I pick this up often and reread it and I enjoy it more and more every time. Okay so the next prompt is Portable Hope, a book that restores your faith in humanity, faith in life, or faith in yourself, or all three. A book that says it's going to be okay, the world is full of good things, and tomorrow is going to be better. And the first one that I have for that is The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. I love this book so much, uh, and to me this is such a faith in humanity restoring book because it's about characters who lived through a terrible war and relied on each other for comfort and strength and who come together over their love of books it's an epistolary novel, so it's written in letter form, which I just find additionally <laughs> comforting. Uh, and yeah, this book just reminds me that there is goodness and there is friendship and caring and selflessness in the world. And it's not all wickedness and bad stuff. <laughs> and also in a similar vein, uh, in terms of how it makes me feel, is Because of When Dixie by Kate D. Camillo. I have read and reread this book so many times. I think this is one of the most brilliant novels I've ever read. It's it's written so simply, but it conveys so much depth and so much uh, meaning and subtle enchantment. And I just love this story so much. And I love the way that Kate DiCamillo can draw characters who are complex and flawed, but who are fundamentally good and who learn to rely on each other and notice the good around them. And yeah, I just think that book is so inspirational. Okay, and then we have A Basket for Your Neighbor. So just as it is wonderful to read comfort books ourselves, it can be, you know, equally pleasurable to give comfort books to friends and neighbors and, you know, spread the love. So uh, this prompt kind of asks us to imagine that we're putting together a cozy little basket for a friend or neighbor and what are we going to put in that basket that is going to give comfort to that person. So these are in the wrong order, but the first one that I have for this is The Complete Tales of Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. I treasure this collection so much. I think Winnie the Pooh is great for a rainy day, a blue day, a sad day, when you need to smile and when you need to just be transported to the Hundred Acre Wood and read about cozy funny talking animals. And a book that I think pairs really well with Winnie the Pooh that I'm also going to send to my neighbor is Comfort Food, Eating for Pleasure, Simple Indulgent Food to Stay In For by Maxine Clark. This is a cookbook full of all the things that we really want to be eating. Uh, this is 
a bread pudding on the cover. Uh, it's split up. The sections that it's divided into are based around like places in the home where you might eat these comfort foods, like on the sofa or in bed. Uh, and it's just so luscious and indulgent, and I think it would pair really well with Winnie the Pooh because he is always hungry for a delicious treat. And then finally, the last prompt is a walk in the woods. Uh, so though we would like to stay curled up indoors with our books forever, or at least I would, we have to venture out into the world again sometime. A walk in the woods always helps me feel calm and refreshed, unless I see a spider or something, but we won't think about that. Tell us about a book with beautiful nature writing, or a book that restores your sense of peace. So, uh, the first one that I have for this is Meadowland, The Private Life of an English Field by John Lewis Stemple. This is another one of those books that's divided up into the months of the year, which I just love, and it, again, is what it says on the box. Uh, and I just found it so comforting to read about how this field changes throughout the year, um, how it has, you know, a time of growing and a time of dying, and how the animals who depend on the field kind of get through their year as well. And I just found it to be very soothing uh, and very inspirational for getting out into nature, having a good ramble, and seeing what you might notice along your way. And then, finally, I have two collections by Mary Oliver. This is A Thousand Mornings and this is Redbird. I love Mary Oliver's poetry so much. I find her very accessible. I feel like she doesn't really make you work too hard to understand her poems, uh, but she does convey a lot of depth and beauty, and her poems are very often centered around the natural world, landscape, and her walking in nature and observing things and connecting those things back to her life and herself um, and the world and God. So yeah, her her collections always make me feel soothed, but also inspired to get out in nature and get some fresh air. So this has been the comfort reading tag. I'm going to put all these books away and go make a cup of tea. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.